Hello everyone, welcome back to another genre breakdown video. Today we will be breaking down the quest genre on a massive scale. We will dive into its history, its changes, and why we human beings love this genre. Now sit back, take notes, and let's begin our journey in understanding this quest. Now, on with the video. The quest genre is one of the most recognizable genres known in human literature. The concept of a hero learning of a faraway land could somehow achieve something of infinite value such as treasure, land or knowledge. Once they discover this, they set out on a dangerous journey to reach it, thus becoming the most important thing to them. It does not matter the perils or difficulty the heroes faces. The story itself is written and shaped by this sole goal and until that objective is triumphantly secured, the hero will not stop. Some of the greatest stories known to us are quests. You simply must look at old myths and fairy tales. As for actual stories, we can say the story of Odysseus, Dante's divine comedy, and even Moses. In the film world, we have Steven Spielberg's Raiders of the Lost Ark, and the forever modern classic, Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings, based on the Tolkien books of the same name. The story of a quest has a couple of traits, which we, the audience, can spot. After this video, watch a film and see if you can spot these traits. After all, some of these stories all share the same goals, desires and passions. The only difference is what the reward at the end will be. In Treasure Island or Disney's Treasure Planet, it is an infinite treasure. Raiders of the Lost Ark is the discovery of something that could change the world, while Lord of the Rings is to complete a task that can save all of Midgard. Dumbass. This is the drive of the quest genre. We now know the drive and we have a basic understanding of the quest now. Let's break down the traits of the genre. The first being the cool. The call usually begins with our hero and his companions having a need to go on a quest. In most cases, it is expected that the hero has a compulsion to leave, perhaps due to a recurring nightmare, even when his environment is in a time of peace. The genre then brings the hero out of paradise into a state of alarm and unease. The perfect example being brought to ship down, the rabbit called Fiverr feels something terrible is coming closer and closer, leading him to tell his brother of a vision he has been having of the fields being covered in blood, causing a few rabbits to band together and leave. You know, I honestly forgot how messed up some of these animated films was back then. The fact that I don't even know how this got a U rating. This film has been classified U. That means it can be seen by people of all ages and there will be nothing unsuitable for children. Dogs aren't dangerous! Oh, hell no! Bye, have a great time! Another example is the story of Moses, or a uh, DreamWorks Prince of Egypt. Once Moses encounters the burning bush, the bush tells him that all the Jews must leave Egypt, but they will be able to find a new home. A land flowing with milk and honey. After this encounter with God, and armed with this knowledge, Moses is then surrounded by this overwhelming sensation to leave, even with the odds stacked against him. In this point in the story, Moses is about to leave but is encouraged to stay. This is due to the other characters questioning our hero's sense of mind and the conviction of the hero. In the story of Watership Down, we see how the rabbits are shunned for even thinking about leaving. Yet once the hero and his group of like-minded characters depart, do they see how close they were to an unpleasant fate? Going on the quest, it is important we talk about another aspect of fantasy or the quest genre in general. The concept of the hero's companion or friend. You see, in these stories, the hero is usually never alone. Though the story will focus on the hero, the story will always make us aware of the friend. The audience is shown this by mostly one or two traits. That being the hero's group or singular companion has an alter ego. Nevertheless, what stands out is his loyalty and fidelity. So, the perfect example is Sam 
Gamgree, <laughs> forgive me if I butchered the name, Sam Gamgree from Lord of the Rings. The second being one of the most complicated due to them being seen as villains in some occasions. Okay, now hear me out. Let's look at Hazel's character from Watership Down. We know he is the leader and hero. However, each companion has their unique personalities or traits, which adds up and helps Hazel as a whole. Big Wit is strong and brave, Blackberry is the planner, while Fiverr has his ultra instinct hacky future sight. Each of the companions combining their traits is what's helping Hazel succeed on the quest. Without them, I doubt he could do half the stuff he wanted. However, in human nature, a person will always do something if it benefits the goals of themselves. This includes rabbits. So the friend will do whatever he can to help if it also benefits his belief or the core goals of the hero. So now, let's take a look at the journey. Oh, Frodo. Oh, Sam. <laughs> Oh I'm sorry, I attempted. But anyway, it is time to tell you what the journey must unfold. Every quest is always the same. The hero, with his companion, must go through a string of horrific, often near fatal events, followed by a time of rest or guidance from helpers, so when the characters are met with problems that dominate the story's beginning, the hero will go through these alternative phases, life-threatening, then life-pleasuring moments. Um, the perfect example of this is when all hope is lost, the hero's allies arrive defeating the villains, which helps the hero carry on with their journey. So, with that in mind, what life-threatening incidents could our heroes face? Well, everything. For our heroes, the very terrain is dangerous. It is alien or unfriendly and holding secrets which can quickly end the journey. Like how many times have you gone hiking and you sprained your ankle and that's just affected the whole day. Besides unknown terrain, ranging from the stormy seas, the harsh deserts or the coldest mountains, we see another common trait in the quest genre, the monsters. So most heroes will encounter monsters in the quest genre. And the monsters is the first task of the story. You could say it allows the hero to test his strengths and wits against the beast, which cannot be tamed or has never been defeated. In the story of Odysseus, we see him and his men are trapped in the cave of the one-eyed man-eating giant, Plomethius. Apologies for butchering his name. Odysseus and his men are able to trick the giant, giving them time to blind him and then hide long enough to escape to their ship. The whole point of the monster is to test the hero, seeing if they can overcome even the worst events of their lives. So in the Lord of the Rings, this can be the Black Riders, the giant spiders, or a giant army of orcs. Once they have defeated the creature, the hero usually acquires something to help them on their journey. Or they perhaps are even introduced to the maiden of the story due to the monster in guarding her. So think of Shrek. You know, I don't know why Shrek came to my mind at least. Now, the second peril the hero usually faces is more deceptive in nature than anything else. The most common use of temptation in the quest genre involves some beautiful woman promising physical gratification. This usually involves anything of a sexual nature, enriching food, the most extraordinary wine ever made. In some cases, even forbidden knowledge. In the temptation stage, this gives the hero some time to rest after the ordeal they faced before, all the while thinking of the task they have to finish. However, most often the hero is simply seduced or is cast under a powerful spell. The perfect example of this type of character is the goddess Circe. Also, I highly recommend you check out the author Madeline Miller. She wrote a great book on this character. While the temptation has a lot in common with the monster stage, the monster confronts the hero directly. The Enchantress in the Temptation stage lures the hero to their doom with seduction. Still, if the hero can overcome the Temptress, then in some cases the hero may have gained an important figure later in the story called the Helper. We'll be discussing this more later on. The next stage is the Deadly Opposite stage. 
first things first, I just want to say that not all of these stages happen in, a, in the genre of quests. After all, it depends on the story. However, in most stories, this usually does happen. Okay, so with that out of the way, let's, let's break it down. Once the hero and his friends are on the journey, they usually find themselves facing a choice of mortal danger. So let's use the story of Odysseus once more. He is confronted by a narrow path when sailing towards his goal, with two deadly opposites. One being the whirlpool called Chagibis, I'm sorry again, I cannot pronounce the name, or the six-headed sea monster, Skylar. Our heroes will face either being crushed by the rocks or come face to face with Skylar, losing a comrade per head. So that's six. At this moment, the hero must choose between the journey and his friends. Using the story of Moses, he and the Jews are fleeing the Pharaoh and his army. So in this point of the story, they are also up against a raging split sea. Nevertheless, even with the water current being so strong and the fear of the actual split sea collapsing and engulfing them, in the end, the sea is used against the Pharaoh's army, allowing them to cross and reach the promised land. Overall, we can see the deadly opposites more as a test for both the hero and his followers. With each decision, we are testing them on their loyalty to the quest. Will Moses cross the Red Sea to the promised land of milk and honey? Will Frodo and Sam be willing to leave one of, one of the other behind if it is the only way to destroy the ring? These small choices affect the hero and the world around them. This part can lead to a chance to meet the dead as well. For now, we shall call this the land of the dead. No pun intended, okay? So in this stage, or the land of the dead stage, is basically, once you enter the land of the dead, two things will usually happen in the story. They either have a horrific experience with the spirits of the dead as a final obstacle to overcome, or it will give a chance for the hero to contemplate on what he has done and the lives they must have lost. Okay. Some stories use this section to learn by consulting with the spirits on how to pass. You know, like how to overcome. Now armed with the knowledge, they leave this horrifying area and are finally ready to complete the journey. The end is near. All right, so we've made it to the end, sort of. You see, when our hero finishes their goals and arrives home, it is usually a final task, which is mostly personal. So going back to our, well, hero Odysseus, when Odysseus returns to his home of Attica, he is shocked that his home is in total disarray with powerful men filled with greed and arrogance. And to make matters worse, when he arrives home, he is met by a hundred suitors. His wife, Penelope, announces that she will marry anyone who can pull the string of Odysseus's mighty bow. So you can imagine what happens. All the suitors try and fail, except for one, who reveals to be Odysseus. The suitors are shot and executed. Odysseus is back home, removing the small evil in his home of Ephica, and is happy, sort of. So looking at films, we could say Watership Down, once they arrive at the land, they can rest after doing the work of building their homes, remembering the rabbits who died on their journey. Overall, the quest is a familiar story type within all of fiction. You can use this concept for multiple movies and see patterns in movies we watch today. None is more widespread than fantasy, sci-fi and action adventure. Look at the upcoming films, Doom, The Batman, Candyman and No Time to Die, Spider-Man Far From Home. You will be able to see and clearly point out elements of the quest genre. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It took a while to make and I want to apologize for that. A lot has happened in the recent months me sadly getting COVID and then losing a family member and also you know my own state of mental health but now I'm feeling a lot better so I just want to say to everyone thank you for watching and also take care of yourself. Beijo, ciao.